Hey folks, Armin Hammer here, and today I wanted to talk to you about the Granite Games as a CrossFit Games qualifier. Last weekend was my fourth year in a row at the Granite Games in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And while I am very familiar with how they run and what they've got going on, you may not be. So the biggest question when they announced that they would become a sanctioned CrossFit event, qualifying someone for the CrossFit Games, how does it live up to that type of a standard? I wanted to take that question on in three different points. The programming, the athlete experience, and the spectator experience. Let's get started. From a programming perspective, the Granite Games are a fantastic test of fitness. John Swanson has been involved in CrossFit for well over 10 years, and he has a talent for programming tests that are dynamic, exciting, and well-rounded. And on top of that, he gets it all done without brutally murdering his athletes. In the past few years, the Granite Games has actually functioned really well as a predictor of regionals performance. And on top of that, they've been taking athletes in the pro division off-site to compete in things like triathlons or running up ski slopes with weights. The sort of thing that you would see at the games, things that don't usually happen at regionals, but are great indicators of someone's overall fitness. And the crazy thing about all of that is that they're able to balance this really well-rounded pro division test with what is probably the largest participatory event in this entire space. And that brings me to the athlete experience. From a logistical standpoint, Point, the Granite Games are a marvel. I mean, they're absolutely mind-blowing. 2,000 athletes, a dozen different divisions, three different locations, running continuously over the course of a weekend, and all of it is like clockwork. Rarely, if ever, are events off schedule. Medical is always available and there in order to help out with anything from hand tears to dizziness and lightheadedness after a particularly tough event. On top of that, the athletes are well-informed and up-to-date about their heat schedule and the warm-up areas are robust with plenty of equipment and space for everyone who wants to get in there, loosen up prior to their workouts. From a planning perspective, everything is considered from the distance between the implements to the little stickers that are marking where the athletes should be standing at what point during the workout. All of these things come together to form a coherent and cohesive experience for the athletes. The only knock on the Granite Games is the spectators. Not that there isn't a good spectator experience, but that it just doesn't have a lot of spectators. There's plenty to see and do for spectators. The fitness roundtable, hosted workouts, a deep vendor village, kids activities, all of it is there, but there just aren't spectators. There could be a few reasons for this, but there are two that I wanna focus on. The first is that the nature of the event is participatory, and the second is it takes place in St. Cloud, Minnesota. As a participatory event, the Granite Games is focused on its community, making sure those thousands of athletes are experiencing a well-run, on-time, safe competition over the course of the weekend. To accommodate that, we're talking 20, 25, even 30 lane heats, sometimes with multiple workouts happening on the same floor at the same time. And logistically, this makes a lot of sense, but for a spectator, it can be difficult to follow. The second thing to talk about is the fact that it takes place in St. Cloud, Minnesota. The Granite Games sells out basically every hotel room within 20 miles of that place, and it just isn't enough to support the size of event that it can be. In a bigger city with a different venue, not only can the competition morph to allow a better spectator experience of the race itself, but it can also support more people showing up to not only experience that competition, but all the other things that are going on over the course of the Granite Games weekend. The activities are already there. The spectators aren't. That's just the biggest hurdle that Granite Games has to overcome in order to truly embrace the idea of the fitness festival. That said, I'm pretty confident they're gonna be able to figure it out, and John Swanson is a very smart guy. He's gonna be able to plan out and know exactly what he needs to do in order for his 2019 Granite Games in June to be a knockout success. At the end of the day, in the Granite Games, we not only have one of the longest running, best running, and biggest events in the world, it also has some of the best programming for its pro divisions outside of the CrossFit Games itself. While it's not quite there as a spectator experience yet, I think that's a problem that's gonna be relatively easy to fix, especially with where the future of the CrossFit Games season is taking us. I'm excited to see the Granite Games embrace its new role as a CrossFit Games qualifier, while also remaining one of the biggest and best participatory events and community events in the world. And Granite Games 
Games 2019 has a very special place in that it is a June qualifier, which means it's going to witness several qualifiers occur before it, so they're gonna have a lot of opportunity to solve problems, get over hurdles, and foresee the issues that might be downfalls before they ever happen. Remember folks, there's a whole lot going on in our sport and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and important storylines out there. That is what I am here for. I'll catch you guys next time. Oh,